We're ready. Good evening. Uh, today is Thursday, February 25th. It feels more like March 25th or maybe April 25th. May. It's nice and warm. Uh, no snow on the ground. This is beautiful. This is beautiful weather. Um, and it's good to be here with uh, my colleagues on the Arlington School Committee and uh, the professional staff here in Arlington. And we have some friends in the audience who'd like to talk to us. So the first thing we're starting with is our annual public hearing on the budget. So uh, we have one person who has signed up, Mr. Puller. Good evening, Peter Fuller, 7 Kilsyth Road, town meeting member and uh, employed as a lowly lunch recess aide at the Dallin School. <laughs> um, There's nothing lowly about serving our children. <laughs> well, that may be true. Um, I'm here to comment on the budget insofar as the pay policy and practices for us lunch recess aides are embodied in the budget. Uh, recently, we have been paid at an hourly rate below what is required by the Massachusetts minimum wage law. Apparently you can do this because as a public employer and I as a public employee, that law can't be enforced. But I think it's a poor practice. It leads, you know, away from having a motivated employee. It may make recruiting and retaining people harder. For example, this afternoon on your website, three of our elementary schools I've, have help wanted ads up for lunch recess aides. So I ask you as you approve this budget, I don't know where we are in there. It's not called out in position control or anywhere else specifically, but that you consider making a policy that all your employees will be paid at least at the legal Massachusetts minimum wage, even though you're not really required to do so. That would be appreciated for FY17. It would also be a good idea to fix that right now for the rest of FY16. It's not going to break any, either one of those budgets. Just do it. Thank you. Thank you. As this is a budget public hearing, uh, we have to offer three chances for people to come up to speak. Uh, I'm about to close the hearing. Are there any other people who would like to? speak in this public hearing. Any other people would like to speak on this public hearing? Anyone else who'd like to talk in the public hearing? Seeing none, the public hearing is closed. Thank you very much. We now go to our regular meeting in the, yes. Would it be out of order to respond to Mr. Fuller? Um, no, it, it would not because he's not speaking in public participation. And uh, if you'd like to, please. I would like to, um, because I entirely agree with the sentiments expressed. In fact, I'm going to let uh, Mr. Spiegel, who is our uh, HR office director, um, talk a little bit to this as to what our plans are. Yeah, and Mr. Fuller has been in touch with me, and uh, so and I haven't been able to get in touch with I haven't had the chance to get in touch with you this week, but we have been in close touch on the school side and the town side on this issue. It is true that um, the law, the Massachusetts uh, wage laws do not apply to municipalities as long as we pay at least the federal minimum wage because the federal sta Fair, Labor Stand Fair Labor Standards Act applies to us. Um, however, the town administration and the school district administration has decided that we are going to increase the people who do make minimum wage in the town, both town and school employees, um, to the mass minimum wage effective the first week, the first full week in April, um, based on when payroll can make that adjustment. Um, and we're going to do it townwide at the same time. So that will be $10 an hour starting in April for the rest of this calendar year. And then in January, when the Massachusetts minimum wage goes up again to $11 an hour, we will increase townwide to $11 an hour. Um, we wanted to be on the same page with the town. We didn't want to have town employees and school employees at that level not get the same. So, um, 
so effective in April, and we will get a notice out to all the uh, awesome. recess and cafeteria uh, monitors to let them know. Great. Um, I, I don't want to engage in a discussion nope. point on this, <coughs> simply because it's the first time it came to us. I just have a question. I, I th uh, 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 I'll entertain a couple of questions. I think this is an interesting topic that I wasn't aware of, and I think it's worthy of us thinking about a policy on this going forward, but I don't want to engage in a conversation flat out tonight. So are there any quick questions we can have, Dr. Seuss? Oh, I just have a quick question. Um, does this only apply to permanent or full-time employees or, or long-term employees rather than, say, a temporary employee, like a substitute? Well, Is substitutes are already being paid. I, I know they don't, we don't, we pay seven, substitutes $75 a day right. for a six and a half hour day. Okay. I mean, they're okay. above the minimum wage. Um, so any employee and, and the, the people okay. um, who work in the in this capacity in the schools are technically part-time employees mm -hmm. uh, they vary in the hours depending on the school of how many hours per day they work and some don't work every day some work mm -hmm. some do some work a few days a week so um, it, it varies but anyone at, at that would be at the ten dollars an hour <clears throat> Okay. Um, so we now go off to public participation. First would be Greg Christiana. Can we switch positions? Sure. Okay. Juliet Moore. <coughs> Name and address for the record. Uh, we don't respond in public participation, but uh, we're glad to listen to you. And uh, if it's not something we're ready to talk about tonight, we will often put things on a future agenda or refer them to subcommittees. So welcome. Thank you. Um, Juliet Moyer, 14 Wellesley Road. Um, I live right in the Thompson District and I have three children there. Um, I come to you today on behalf of the School Enrollment Parent Group. Um, many thanks to those of you on the, school en on the Enrollment Task Force for your thoughtful discussion around both the elementary school and the middle school crowding issues. Thanks also to the other members of the school committee who come to the table with educational expertise and a commitment to find the best social, emotional, and educational solution for our students. Um, Dr. Bodie, we support your preferred plan to use the Gibbs as either a second middle school or a town wide sixth grade, and we're ready to do what we can to make that happen for a September 2018 opening. We appreciate that time is of the essence, and any delay beyond September 2018 will result in the need for at least eight modular units on the Audison grounds, where modular siting could be costly and limited. It's our expectation that any additional cost estimates at Audison will include the cost of the parking structure, the cost of modulars, mm -hmm. the cost of additional shared space, and will give due consideration to all the additional overruns that are expected from ledge blasting and delays from abutters. We support the use of the Gibbs because we're confident that when considering the Audison, additional monetary costs plus the unquantifiable negative impact on educational outcomes will result in a project that should be taken off the table. We value the Gibbs tenants. With regard to the ACA, um, Adam Chapdelaine Chapt mentioned on Tuesday's meeting, at Tuesday's meeting, that he believed there is an avenue within existing town spaces where a different model could work. As a group, we're eager to assist in rallying around the town in its efforts to find the tenants new homes. To that end, providing the tenants with notice this June will allow all parties involved to make necessary arrangements so that they can continue to be a par part of the fabric of our town for many years to come. Finally, thank you once again for your support of the Thompson edition. Um, though the timeline is tight, the collaborative efforts of the members of the Enrollment Task Force make possible a September 2017 opening. Please know that we're willing to do all that we can to see these projects to completion, and if we can assist in any way, we are here to help. Thank you very much. Uh, now, Greg, you're up. Name and address for the record, please. Yes, uh, Greg Christiana, 82 Ridge Street, Precinct 15. Mm -hmm. um, uh, I have children uh, at or soon to be at uh, Bishop. Mm -hmm. um, I, like Juliet, I also uh, speak on behalf of the School Enrollment Parent Group, and I'd like to reiterate the thanks for all the hard work that, that everyone on this committee has done, especially those on the task force as well. Uh, and I know Juliet covered a lot of material just now, and there's one aspect I'd like to put a finer point on. Uh, the Audison expansion, we believe, is a no-win situation. Uh, due to the overall costs and where it leaves the Gibbs, which is in desperate need for renovation no matter what. <coughs> to believe that the Audison expansion saves the Gibbs tenants from re relocating, we believe is a false choice. Renewing leases at the Gibbs on June 30th would solve no one's long-term challenges. 
So let's act now while we still have the chance before the costs to the taxpayers and to our children inevitably goes up. Thank you. Thank you very much. With us tonight <clears throat> is Liz Higgins, a first grade teacher at the Bishop. And uh, Mr. Christiana, you may end up with Liz as your child's teacher. <laughs> your child gets the first grade, and that would be a wonderful thing. Uh, Liz has passed uh, a document before us. Uh, Liz, would you please uh, take the microphone from Mr. Hainer. Uh, we don't want him to have it. Uh, <laughs> and uh, tell us about what you're doing. So on Wednesday, uh, March 23rd at Arlington Town Hall, there will be an information session on the issue of the charter school cap that we as are all in very strong support of. Um, mm -hmm. So we wanted to make it known to, to everyone in our community that if you want more information on the topic, because it seems like it's, it is a topic that not a lot of people are aware of and how it directly affects mm -hmm. our school budget and also in larger cities. Mm -hmm it's even more crippling, so. A charter school student in, in this town will cost us $14,000 off the right. top. Right, and at this point, Arlington isn't losing that much money, but that, that can change if, if the cap um, is lifted. Yes. It's our information that there are eight, eight students in the town of Arlington mm -hmm. that attend a charter school, so. And eight times 14. Mm -hmm. 1.4 right. teachers. 1.5 teachers. And, uh, you know, obviously that doesn't save us any cost by having eight less kids, but it, it right. certainly is the, the cost of a teacher uh, plus uh, right. to, to lose those kids. So. And in the state of Massachusetts, it's hundreds <coughs> of millions of dollars being mm -hmm. lost in public education. So it's a really important thing for people to become aware of and support. So. One of the members of the State Board of Education in approving the two charter school, new, char new charters that they approved, one in Springfield, one in uh, Brockton, said, I did not take into consideration the economic impact on the district or the municipality. It is not my job to do that. And certainly, certainly uh, draining money out of a municipal system for a charter school where the community has no choice in the matter right um and the money is taken off the top town meeting has no uh, appropriation authority uh, finance committee has no oversight authority uh, no safeguards on on finances or governance uh I, I have no problem conceptually with charter schools but uh, the funding and governance mechanisms are very problematic and, and, and it needs to be fixed i agree and thank you for letting me speak on that uh, and you are re representing the AEA tonight. I am. I'm the second vice president of the Arlington Education Association. So we welcome you to our Thank meeting. You. Thank you. Mr. Hainer, you can take the microphone back. <laughs> Thank you. For that. <laughs> I'd just like to comment on the statement that you made about uh, one of the commissioners uh, on the state board. Doesn't feel uh, that that's their job, yet they still create an inordinate amount of mandates that cost us a lot of money. Mm -hmm. They're, they're definitely, and I say it passionately, the legislature the, the, has to get some control on these people. Mm -hmm. no. Thank you. Okay. Any other comments on this? I hope everybody would uh, come and, and, and enjoy this uh, event. We, I also have in front of me a thank you note from Charles and Elena uh, Lanford thanking us for remembering um, their, uh, their son, I believe, yes. uh, at, at, at a previous meeting. Um, and that is uh, public participation and we're into the meeting. Uh, so we've, we're now at um, a breakneck pace to budget discussion, Dr. Bodie. I think we're at the point where uh, we've presented the budget and this is an opportunity for the committee to um, give us some feedback. Uh, there are 
issues over the last couple of weeks that you would like us to address, um, changes to be made. This is the, the evening to be talking about those. Um, the, the next time we meet in March, mm -hmm. that will be the time that you will actually be voting for this to become your budget. And then we will have a, our, our meeting schedule with the Finance Committee is March 16th. 16th. It's a Wednesday. It's a Wednesday. Mm -hmm. Mr. Hainer. I have only one question. The, uh, the chart that you presented to us before of the, uh, the, that had the green and the yellow on it, have any of, the, any, any of those things changed? Have you taken anything out or added anything? Thank you. Uh, Dr. Allison Ampey. Um, I know this isn't a comment on the budget so much as the budget process. So as you know, the budget subcommittee has been trying to do some outreach through PTOs and stuff, and I just want to report back. The main comments that we've gotten through the email, we've just gotten a few, and it's all been in support of having full-time kindergarten aides, which mm -hmm. I know is already on our minds, but just mm -hmm. that's pretty much all the feedback I mean if either you guys <laughs> heard enough yeah so I've, I've heard a couple on that but that was yeah that mm -hmm. so just so the rest of you are aware well thanks it, 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 it all it, we, this is not our last opportunity to make budget adjustments uh, uh, we are we will be voting the next meeting the budget we present to town meeting and that will become our adopted budget, but we do have a right to make transfers and amend it uh, subsequently, Mr. Hainer. Uh, I'd like to say the, the comments that I have heard, uh, <coughs> they're not exuberant about the cuts that have been made, mm -hmm. uh, but they have heard that we have advocated to, and expressed our concerns about it too. So the, uh, mm -hmm. we just wanted to share that. Okay. Any other comments on this line item? Mr. Thielman. Could you just review again, so, I, so we're clear on this, or either one of you, on how many positions do we have in reserve and what the process will be over the summer to utilize those? We have two that are slated for the Thompson because of the two new classrooms that are going to be provided, and so we have to staff them. Those, are, those aren't reserve positions. Those they are, are not. Mm -hmm. um, they're in the budget. They're in the budget. <clears throat> We have one. We have two reserve positions. One of whom we know is destined for the Hardy, and the second may as well be destined to the Hardy, and that's it. That's it. So there's just two reserve positions. And we Not think really. one is already spoken for at the Hardy. Definitely. So that's it. So my follow-up question is: I mean, are we are we comfortable with that level of staffing reserve, Dr. Bodie? No. Yeah. We're not. Um, and, and as we went through the deliberations ourselves and looking at what the other um, choices were, mm -hmm. it, it was with a lot of pause to realize that would be the case because last year we had eight yeah. and we needed eight. That's right. <clears throat> so what we have said to principals and curriculum leaders is that the staffing they have other than what we have put in the budget is the staffing they need to work with. Now, having said that, we have already had one, sl sl I don't even know if it's actually gonna be a slight change, because I think we rolled over the FTE, we're pretty sure. But already we're starting to see as we schedule um, at the middle school and the high school that we're going to find some situations where class sizes are gonna be 2930 and we, we have to figure out something. Um, um, generally, the, what people need, you need to understand, the, the budget is a blueprint, and we may need to make adjustments as we go along, and we make adjustments even during the course of the year. For example, what we were just talking about this evening, um, this, mm -hmm. this state law, um, it, we just felt after a discussion with town as well that this was something that while we don't have to do it, we should do it. And so we have to make adjustments in our budget in order to be able to do that. Now, the reason why you don't see it in, the, in this particular, <coughs> uh, in for the FY17, is that this actually happened after and we just kept the budget as it is. So the cost of this will have to be put in there and we'll figure out what that would be. The other question uh, that surfaced for me anyway was um, 
<coughs> are we have we, have we anticipated the the, the most uh, uh, optimistic McKibben numbers? And in, in terms, of if we, if we anticipate the most uh, optimistic McKibben numbers for kindergarten enrollment, do we have enough staff for that? Which one's optimistic? Well, <laughs> <laughs> the, the higher projection. Right. It, de it depends on the di it depends on the distribution. Um, I th if the numbers come in as predicted, the answer is yes. Okay, that's how it's. It's the it. issue of a distribution and how that that happens and and. We will be beginning um, in March kindergarten registration, but if the last two years are any indication, we really will not know what our kindergarten numbers are until well into the summer. Because we all have been here for a while now, and every year in June, July, and August, or whenever, the July and August, we get a lot of emails about we do. kindergarten enrollment. And so I just want to know if we're prepared. Mm -hmm. They may be slightly larger, but I, I think that yes, we would be prepared. It's it's not that big a jump. It's just again, it's the district where the students live in town. Okay. And um, right now, if we used our our census numbers, we would say we have too many staff people. But the the census numbers barely be. They, they certainly give us an idea that, but they're Don't they're off. That. They're what just off. <laughs> 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 a lot of move-ins. Okay. All right, thank you. Okay, Mr. Heiner, followed by Dr. Allison. We can just hope that anyone that moves in moves into a buffer zone. Mm -hmm. Dr. Allison Ampey. Um, I actually had sort of a similar question, which is first I wanted to point out to our viewers at home that the reserve positions are not extra. They're for anticipated mm -hmm. enrollment. They're just not assigned. They're more unassigned than, than reserve, true reserve. Um, but I wanted to know when we added in the four, I'm calling all of the four reserve, did that, was that addressing all our expected enrollment increase to next year? Or did we, are we, do we have some unfilled reserve positions? If we, certainly the, the three, I think we're going to end up needing four, the other two, the other one for Hardy. I think Hardy is going to need two. The answer is yes. Based on what I've, I've gone over this with the elementary principals and looking at their numbers, the answer is yes. We would have the staffing that we need based on what we know now. Because we, we pretty much know five of the classes. And, and middle school and high school too. That one's a tougher one. The high school is even a little bit trickier because our staffing is based on student choice and what courses they take. So once the choices are made, department chairs look at the staffing. Now what can happen at the high school if we don't have the staffing is that some students may not get their elective choices. But we certainly make sure that students get the courses that they need to take. But that has been the issue at the high school for a while now, that um, we could use more electives we would probably fill them because a lot of students want to take more than the, the just the, mm -hmm. than the courses that right. they have. And the math department's a perfect example. There are more students students taking math than there are students in the school. What it means is that there are, <laughs> I know it's a funny way of saying it, but what it means is that there are a fair number, probably as many as 100 students taking two math classes. <coughs> So that's the issue, is the choices that they make and the electives they take. So some of our electives, we, we, they go up to pretty high numbers in order to get as many students getting their choices as they want. But we always, I don't think we've had a year that I can remember that we haven't arrived you know, at some point um, after scheduling to have to increase, uh, you know, divide, divide a section or add something. Mm -hmm. it, it, it invariably happens. Okay, thank you. Everybody else, thank you. Um, uh, and we have a financial report in queue. Any questions on the financial report, Mr. Hainer? Uh, on line 81322, it says other stipend. Could you just tell me what that is, what that means? Please. Um, other stipend is a category, um, you know, the way, the way we book stipends right now is very higgledy-piggledy. 
And some of the things, I had hoped this budget cycle to be able to really lock down stipends in a better way, but the staffing loss made that impossible. Um, it's my hope that moving forward we will be able to get a grip on that. But basically the way stipends have been handled since I've been here is a carry forward of the way they were when I inherited them. And there were certain kinds of stipends that were called one thing and certain kinds of stipends that were called another. And this is a carryover budget. Some stipends land in this code, but not all stipends by any stretch of the imagination. Are, we st are you still anticipating the over budget part? Yes. Okay. Uh, thank you. And the next one, uh, 83, excuse me, 83804 Athletic Services? Yes. I guess my Athletic, question is Athletics has been running over budget for quite some time. Okay, now I'll direct it to Dr. Bordy. Is there any anticipation of reeling it in or dealing with it? What we want to do is find out really what is what should be the athletic budget. And this has been an ongoing issue, and in much to um, our current athletic director and, and, <coughs> and Ms. Johnson's efforts, we really are doing, we're getting a much better idea. Um, there are, there are some costs that continue to increase, and the, what we would like to be able to do is to say this is what you can spend, and that number has not been as clear as it could have been, and it's, it's because it's actually difficult to get that. that clarity about it. But we are very, getting very close, and well, this number that we have in the budget now is actually uh, very close to the state report we did last year, and this is the first time that I can remember that the athletic budget really reflects. And one of the things I think it's also important for people to know is that the fees rep don't even rep they represent less than half. Do you know what percentage less they? Because some Somewhere people have this idea that we're, we're funding the no, athletic department fees. Thirty-four-ish percent, I'd say, off the top of my head. Thank you. You anticipated my next question, and I appreciate the effort. On it. My last one is line 87601, and I know this is going to may be a difficult question to answer. Uh, are these expenses? Uh, Those were the ones from the summer. Ah, thank you. <coughs> thank you. Mr. Pierce. <coughs> thank you, uh, Mr. Chair. I uh, had two quick questions. One is on 81201, uh, temporary salaries and wages professional. It's quite a bit over budget estimating. Um, where, where is this coming from and, and what, what are our plans to deal with it? Many of the stipends live in this line. Okay. So intensified professional <laughs> development hits to this line. Um, other types of stipends hit to this line. Uh -huh. So this is a combination of additional <clears throat> professional development efforts, existing stipends, additional stipends. It's really kind of a catch-all. Mm -hmm. the, the one immediately below it, temporary wages, temporary salaries and wages other, is predominantly athletic coaches, but not entirely. And all of these codes, all of this legacy of the stipends is muddy, and it's an area I've really wanted to get to the bottom of and clean up. You know, we, we kind of are chucking them in big buckets, and I don't like that. I would like to parse it out more finely. So that's what the plan is going forward, is to make, yes. degroup really get clear yeah. you know what are the stipends what for what purpose I mean and we did some preliminary work where we basically came up with five general categories of stipend activity and you know at a minimum have codes for those five so we can look at them academically supportive stipends slash PD um, student support stipends you know clubs and activities athletic support stipends um, additional administrative duty stipends I mean I'm mm -hmm. quoting from fallible memory but breaking them down into these kinds of categories so that you could see not only is it a stipend but what is the purpose of the stipend mm -hmm. and in general stipends fall into some very distinctive categories well so, i'm sorry with the follow-ups well, but will that uh, will that be able to be put on um a tracking report like this with that amount of detail? Well, yeah, i mean if we instead of having 81201 right. if we made up five codes in a sequence somewhere where there are all the different kinds of stipends. Mm -hmm. And so we, you know, we re rename them. We probably add two or three. And then you'd say, okay, athletic stipends, da da, you know, administrative stipends, da da. Right. You know, you would see it in this report. Okay, so assuming that that's the case and that's where that money is going over budget, how, still, how are we going to, to keep this from budget busting us <laughs> at the end of the year? Well, I mean, I think in terms of professional development, 
you know, we're going to have to be planning differently next year. You know, as you saw in the cut list, uh -huh. you know, that there was, a, there was a real need to increase our budget for professional development work, right. Right. and we weren't able to fund that fully. You know, so that's going to be a pullback point. Once we get the athletics tightened up, that will be a pullback point. You know, and, and it could be that there are other things being charged here that are not stipends. You know, it could be that someone started out as a part-time something and, and they changed to a TA, but their budget code is still hitting to the other. You know, there's, there's also some bit of muck in there, too, that needs to be peeled out. Dr. Allison Ampey. Um, thank you. Um, I have a question on line, row 40. Um, it's 82103, power and electricity. Mm -hmm. I'm just wondering why that one's so over. Well, because the other funding for that comes out of revolving funds, and this is just okay, looking at... Okay, so it's at, just moving that. Yeah, okay, this so is it's just looking the, at the general fund portion of that. The actual cost is not... Correct. All the, the costs are not. sitting here, but mm -hmm. the budget isn't okay. all here. Okay, that's what I was guessing. But mm -hmm. um, And just um, following up on Mr. Hainer's comments about athletics, I just wanted to point out again to our viewers that although our athletic fees are high, I just want to point out that we haven't increased them in multiple years, even though we are seeing rising costs both for transportation and ice time and other uh, assorted things. So, mm -hmm. Dr. Seuss? Um, yeah, I, I know the tuition to other schools is, is we're looking much better than we maybe anticipated, which I suppose is good. Um, uh, actually, I have a question about this mm -hmm. and I was is this well, not the right time to raise that or um, or is that it's re that was really in the prior I should have I know I should have done it I'm sorry like ask, <laughs> go ahead. I'm sorry um, yeah I have a question about um, digital copies of things when we list digital copies does that is that a, a recurring cost in general so when we're buying subscriptions to a digital textbook oh oh oh, yeah. oh. That's one of the curriculum materials. Yeah, under curriculum materials. I was just uh -huh. wondering. What is your question? I'm sorry. Um, so is digital copies, is that an expense that we would see every few years, or is that usually a yearly expense when we buy digital copies? Six, curriculum? Yeah, materials? usually it's about six years. It depends on the, okay. um, the company and how they structure their fees. Some are three. <laughs> okay. I don't think we have any that are one, so they're okay, three, good. four, okay. five, or six. Okay, good. Thanks. Anything else on the uh, financial report? Hearing none, we have two uh, items of business regarding our schedule for the uh, going forward. <coughs> Number one, <coughs> we have the misfortune of having a meeting scheduled for the 24th of March, which is also the night in which uh, the League of Women Voters holds their, no. 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 They changed it? They changed it. Oh. Um, <laughs> so this is the good thing with being in the cycle, so I know what's going on. It's been changed to Tuesday the 22nd, awesome. not because of us. It's because the 24th is also Holy Thursday, which, oh. and, and, um, which was a problem for some of the candidates. So. Oh. Oh. Okay. So, that's been so I guess we don't need to uh, adjust the March 24th meeting. Okay. Um, I've uh, proposed and we've got a doodle poll uh, to have a school committee retreat in May. Um, the, uh, Nancy Walzer has consented to come and work with us to do a refresher on uh, governance and uh, as Dr. Seuss didn't participate in the governance project and uh, we will have Mr. Pierce's replacement with us uh, on the committee starting in April. I thought this, this was an important thing to do. I consulted with Dr. Seuss and she's agreed under her leadership as chair to participate. Uh, so uh, we did the doodle poll and the prevailing date was May 21st, uh, 930 to 1230. So we'll need a motion to uh, have a board retreat on the 21st of May, 930 to 1230. So moved. Moved by Ms. Starks. Second. Second by Dr. Seuss. Mr. Hainer. I'll wait till after the vote. Okay. It, does it, it pertains to retreat, but not this topic. Okay. Any discussion on the motion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Uh, Mr. Hainer. Last year we had a retreat, and I thought that 
that was this was it on goals. Mm -hmm. uh, are we going to? Is it the intent of the to do a, a second retreat or for goals, or what are we going to do? Well, I, I think that one of the most important things we can do is do the refresher in terms of the governance. Some of this will naturally touch goals, but I think that uh, I, I would ask the current, uh, the incoming chair, to have a conversation with Nancy Walzer uh, about what, how, how to structure this, and whether we can. So, do if I, I guess what I'd, I'd ask mm -hmm. that the and future chair to let us know if, if the. Uh, I think a meeting on governance is absolutely wonderful, especially with for you and for the, uh, Mr. Pierce's replacement. <coughs> I also valued what we did last year to some extent on, mm -hmm. on having that. I don't want to diminish e either part of it because it took all of it took several meetings for us yeah. to originally due to the governance and and the uptake. But the goals I valued that last year as well. And uh, I, I'm not suggesting maybe it might take two. I don't know, but anyway. Dr. Seuss. Um, I, can, I can tell you what I'm thinking. I, I'm seeing this governance meeting to be bigger, potentially, to sort of talk about some high-level issues about what we want the goals to look like it, included in our discussion. Um, because I think that we started to have that conversation last time and we didn't really finish it. So I'd love to have that kind of, I think that once we have that discussion, my thinking is when we meet again to finalize the goals, to, to, to craft them, um, that we potentially have a, long, a shorter meeting then. That's what I'm thinking right now. I don't. Just long as yeah, yeah but, but it's definitely, I mean, I, I, I agree. I mean, th there's a, a balance. We don't want to have too many meetings, but we definitely want to have the meetings that we need to, to discuss our, the things that we need to discuss. Yeah, so what's the time? I'm just wondering, you, Mr. Pierce knows the timeline. When do we have to approve the goals for fiscal year 17, by June 30th, right? So by the, isn't that right? Yeah, I believe so. Yeah, so it's by the end of June. So <coughs> we have some time between the governance workshop and the end of June to kind of meet offline to yeah. finalize goals. Yeah. Some of the governance work naturally leads into yeah. discussion of goals, but uh, uh, they're, they're, they were intertwined. But I, before we go too far down the discussion, I, I will connect uh, Nancy Walzer to uh, Dr. Seuss and have them uh, discuss what they think can happen so that we're not talking about this blindly. But the board's interest in revisiting goals in a retreat format is noted. Yeah, mm -hmm. but I th we're not talking about, I don't think we're talking about the overarching goals, right? You're talking about the, the Just, uh, not the goals. Yeah, yeah goals. I mean. You're talking, you're talking about the specific goals. Yeah. I, I think it'd be valuable to have a high level discussion before we start to wordsmith. Okay. Them. I mean, that's, that's sort of my thinking right now. And have you, and have you started, has the administrative team started thinking about FY17 goals? No. No, okay. So I, so I think at our timing, we don't want to get ahead of the administrative team. When do you think? Well, we will. We'll, we'll probably start engaging in that later toward the end of March. End of March, okay, so we're consistent with your timing. We're not getting ahead of you. Okay, that's what I learned up here. Thank you. Another conversation with this topic? Ms. Fitzgerald, would you kindly notify the two people who are running for school committee who are not at the table tonight that we intend to have that and should the, uh, one of them be elected, uh, which is highly likely seeing that there's um, three candidates for two seats, um, that we hope that they keep that date open. Okay. Uh, Mr. Pierce. It is, it is by May 15th. Okay. Oh, the, oh, the goals? Okay. May okay, so that's a quick timing. May 15th. Yeah. Well, the thing is, is that I'm, I, I'm. So that we can't, that's. There is, so I guess, so I guess this so workshop, okay, so that's what I want to clarify. Yeah, okay. So this is governance only. This by is then, governance. But then we got to, so, okay. Mm -hmm. So since we're on okay. the topic of the goals, <laughs> I'm wondering if one of the subcommittees should work with the administrative leadership That's a great idea. to kind of vet some goals and then before they're brought before the committee. That's a great idea. Okay. So I, um, uh, it could be the, the curriculum committee if, you, if people want, or it could be another committee. I don't care. I, uh, Mr. Hainer. Since the goals are tied into the superintendent's evaluation piece, Maybe it belongs to accountability. Yeah, that's what I mean. Curriculum. Yeah. Yeah. I'm sorry. Curriculum I'm, accountability. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you. That you owe me and I mix right. up the words. That's the long title committee. Okay. So now that's where I had was going. Okay. okay. All right. So we'll we'll try to we'll, 
we it'll be the next left, group. Really. Yeah. Yeah, nothing herein restricts us from uh, going in, in, in doing another retreat or coming in at yeah, another time. Yeah. The May dates were picked because that, that was when Nancy was available. Ah. I tell you what, I'll, so I'll talk to Dr. Bodie and see when the administrative team is going to have a draft to mm -hmm. review. If it's in March, we can do it. If not, there's a new school committee that sits in, in uh, mm -hmm. April and there's nothing we can do until that committee's. Mm -hmm. I, I think that it pro would probably merit doing after the election because I would think that a new member would want to have a say in the goal. Oh yeah, well I, yeah. The, the committee can't vote for anything until May 15th, mm -hmm. but it's talking, talking about vetting yeah. or having a dialogue with the administration yeah. about goals. Yeah. yeah, I'd like a new member to be able to participate if they choose. Okay. It, it seems to me to be kind of important, but that it, it, it's up to the board what they want to do. Yeah. Uh, Dr. Bode. Well, the policy says that I think what's happened in the last few years is the process has taken a little bit longer. Maybe this will yeah. help it. Mm -hmm. but I think we have, uh, Mr. Gerald can confirm this, but I'm pretty sure the final vote on goals has always been the last meeting of the school committee of the year. Yeah, that has been a practice. Mm -hmm. That's that been has, the actual. That's, yeah. that's what's happened. Now, I think that the goals have been presented early May for beginning discussion and um, but I think having something before it comes to the whole committee might not be a bad idea mm -hmm. okay so maybe the new committee in, in April so we don't have to worry about it okay okay Good. Uh, superintendent's report and dr. Mm -hmm. Bodie uh, this will also include information regarding the school enrollment task force it will mm -hmm. <laughs> It would sort of be a combination, I think, that we have, we have three members here on the task force, but uh, I think this is something that is very much on people's minds of what, 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 how we're going to be moving forward. So what I thought I would do is give a little bit of a shorter version of a presentation of, that I gave the other night at task force with my recommendation and the reasons why. Um, and there are some things that this committee perhaps should begin a discussion on this evening. Not, I also have some other things on the report as well that, w that we can get to. And by the way, since we're talking about goals and accountability, this is, think of this as a, what, this is one of the goals. So we're getting an update where we are, okay? It's true. <laughs> yeah, mm -hmm. very much so. It's, mm -hmm. and it's certainly something that has, um, frankly, been rather dominant. Mm -hmm. Uh, on my uh, on my dance card this year for sure my recommendation after a lot of thought about this is that the best solution for moving forward with addressing Addison's enrollment growth is to have this committee vote to have vote to use Gibbs as a school again there are no there are no solutions that are not without its positives and negatives, challenges and obstacles. There's just none of them. And it's only when you go through each one and you look at the costs and, and some of the challenges or the positives, timelines, that you, really, you start weighing all of these and look to see what really is probably makes the most sense. The basis of my decision is that uh, certainly one of the one of the things that I, I hear a lot from teachers in the school as well and I, from parents is the issue of having a sm smaller educational environment. If we were to put an addition on Audison, um, that would make a very large facility of 1,400 students. Mm -hmm. And to be honest, if that was a viable alternative, I actually might lean that direction because I think that we could do a good job as a school system in creating small learning environments within the school. But the fact is that it's really not a good feasible mm -hmm. alternative because it doesn't lay out well. There's a lot of structural problems in the site itself. Um, c connectivity, uh, there, I, I have a sketch of, and I'm happy to share it with you, just received the other day a sketch of what an addition might be but in actually in a conversation today with our architect th that helped me on this looking at maybe another model but no, no matter what model you look at there are problems 
in terms of how the building, how the addition would connect, what a labyrinthian walk it would be toward media center, cafeteria. So the other piece of the other piece of this is that when you put on an addition to an existing building, it always triggers other codes in the building, the existing building. And until we actually would look at that, which by the way, this task force wants us to look deeper into both the Gibbs, I'll talk more about that in a minute, and the, and the Odyssey alternative. But when you look deeper <coughs> into all the costs, those are potentially going to be significant. Um, the other issue, just because the two are so intertwined as to why one is preferable to the other, is that just putting up the building, the addition, while you have modulars on site, for a couple of years is going to make the site just very difficult um, to, for students, for teachers. It's just going to be difficult to have all that activity and that upset on one small piece of property. The other issue that leans toward um, Gibbs is that it's probably the quickest solution. Mm -hmm of any of the possibilities. And there, on that, uh, that report that I gave you, now it's public to anybody who wants to see it on the task force committee handling uh, the options, how, how we're going to handle the options for Audison enrollment. Um, if, we were to, if we were to, for example, um, put an addition on Audison, that process is probably going to take three to four years. Um, and just in terms of all the design, the bidding, the construction, and the actual construction itself. Meanwhile, you're having modulars there. It is possible with the um, Gibbs solution, should we back it out and begin some movement toward it, it could be possible July 17 to begin construction so that students could be in the building in 18, which would mean that we'd have one year of eight modular classrooms at the middle school. If we have to wait yet another year, we're going to have to add on probably at least two more modulars, classrooms, and incur the cost of continuing to rent the ones that we already have, as well as adding the cost of installing two more. So it's really, it's, it's, it's a cost issue as well um, to not be able to do that. Another issue is that, is that by investing in Gibbs, the town is going to be able to, is going to be able to keep that property and building for a long time. The situation is, is that the building is not in prime shape. It needs a lot of work, and some of the work has been deferred and deferred. What really needs to get done has been done. We're getting a boiler, mm -hmm. but it's been as a, on a Band-Aid mm -hmm. basis. There's going to come a point, um, and it won't be too long down the road before those Band-Aids are going to need, are not going to work, and we're going to need to do more investment. Mm -hmm. And at that point, the town is going to have to decide whether they're going to continue being a landlord there and whether we can have the revenue to, to offset the cost of, of all the repairs. So, I mean, it's, it's um, we have to invest in something. And there's been, this fall, and I appreciate everybody's input into this, because I think it's been a very dynamic and um, engaging conversation. We've had an enormous number of options to take a look at. Mm -hmm. And in, and I think that's been a, a, great, a great process. But, um, and they've included Gibbs and they've included new schools and they've included, but the thing is that we're gonna have to invest in one of those. And if the town does that investment, that money is, is not gonna be put into Gibbs. Mm -hmm. and, and I think that that's part of how we need to think about it. Is this an asset that the town wants to hold on to for a long time, and without that kind of investment in money, it's real. Mm -hmm. It's probably not going to happen. Um, it's p potentially the cost of renovating Gibbs might be one of the least expensive of the options as well. If you 
I will tell you already that the task force has taken off the table doing a new school and also doing a wing, an eighth grade wing, or uh, just add, having the eighth grades here at um, <coughs> in the high school project. And uh, uh, the, the two factors in that were the cost. If you were to build a brand new smaller middle school for say around 500 to 600 students, you would you would probably choose to have 80,000 square feet. That's what is is going on right now. And, and if you look at projects that MSBA is funding, that's about what it would be. Well, new construction is about $400 a square foot. So it's a very expensive option. Not the other issue with a brand new school is that we don't have a land for it unless you can acquire it some way. And most of the land in town is under, um, under, under conservation or it's under parks and rec. In both cases, I think you've got to go to the state legislature for a home rule petition on it. It's, it's quite a process. So if that is going to be an expensive alternative and long. And, I, and then the other part of that new school is does, does the town want to do a project like this without the support of MSBA? Mm -hmm. And if the answer is no, then we have to wait till the high school is well along in, in, the, in order to even, you know, we should be, we could submit it, but it's probably not going to be considered until well along. And then that could take a couple of years. And then the construction itself will take from beginning to end about four years. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's so far off to solve our immediate problem. Mm -hmm. Same thing with the high school. The high school is going to be at least five years from now to when we have the project complete. And the, the cost is going to be more than you would think because there, are, there was an assumption in this idea that there be, we, could, we could just easily share all the core facilities. And that's not really probably likely. And just take one of the core facilities, gym. Right now, we use both gyms most of the day. And by the time we get further along, the high school population is going to increase and we're going to really be needing to use both gyms. There is not going to be the possibility of, use, of having the eighth grade use a gym. They, do it, they have a gym program twice a week. If you look at our elementary schools, just to give you an idea, because we've talked a lot about that at the table, we have a school of 450 students, a gym. We have, we have double classes in gyms with two classes per week in order to cover all the time. So we would almost need an entirely, we need a third gym here on site in order to mm -hmm. have the program. So we have 2,100 kids on this site with a third gym. And it wouldn't happen for five years. And during that time, <coughs> we would have, have modular costs at the middle school mm -hmm. Up to tw up to 20, 18 to 20 modulars during that period of time, so it just didn't seem like a feasible option and would deal with our immediate need. So it, it's it's going through this process, thinking deeply about it, all the implications. That you finally start to say, well, that doesn't that doesn't make sense. That doesn't make any sense. So right now, the task force is considering the two options of the Gibbs renovation and an addition at the middle school, and they've asked to have a more in-depth um, look at the numbers of what would have to be done. And now, while this report that I gave the task force has already looked at that, it, I think that we could go even you know, deeper to get a more, more costs. So for example, at, at Gibbs, the cost for renovation was based on what is the going rate right now, which is $275 a square foot. Well, we probably, and that's not a bad way of doing it. In fact, that's often how when a designer comes in and does their proposal, they, they do it on square footage. Because until you really get into schematics mm -hmm. of, a, of a project, you don't cost these things out. But we could do some costing out, for example, with HVAC. Mm -hmm. we, we know that if the, if, the, if the town wants to hold on to that building long term, patching it isn't going to be the, mm -hmm. the right thing to mm -hmm. do. So what is it going to cost? What kind of a HVAC system would we get? And we could cost that out. Um, and 
those are the kinds of things, in the, you know, dividing up of the space. So for example, the current Gibbs doesn't have a lunchroom, a cafeteria, or a kitchen. So how, where would we put that on site? What would that cost? We can do a lot of that. In fact, um, uh, Lori Coles from HMH is, is putting together a proposal right now. After the task force, I contacted her to look at exactly that for Gibbs and the same thing for the middle school, which will involve structural and mechanical engineers and their cost estimator. So I think we'll have a, we'll even get in a little bit more deeply into this. But basically right now we're down to these two options. As I said to the task force, a lot of people are talking about, well, should the, if we do give, should that be a six through eight or should be a single grade? And I, that is a decision that would have to come from the committee and I think we'll have to have more discussion about that. Um, when would we have to know? Well, if we go with Gibbs, probably in the next few months, because it may affect how, how rooms are configured. Um, the classrooms, that's not an issue. The cafeteria is not an issue. The gym, all those things are not really an issue in terms of educational space. But for example, the number of world language classrooms would be. So there's some curriculum decisions that would have to be made. Special education classrooms. We have, that's actually going to be much more complex than I anticipated, regardless of which we go with. Uh, so that would ha those things would have to be thought about. Um, and so we will, this is going to be a little bit more ongoing, but I would like to keep us moving down this path so that we don't get in a position where we've excluded op and excluded, put ourselves in a position where we couldn't move forward with one of the options in, in as most, uh, the fastest way possible. Mm -hmm. So essentially those are the main ideas um, and I, I know the, other, the people on the task force uh, might want to talk a little bit more about some other issues. Let me see if there's anything, that I, big ideas I missed. No, not really. Mm -hmm. There's a lot more here, but you know, I think those, that covers it, the key ideas. Dr. Seuss. Um, I just have a question about the relationship between a vote that I assume we need to take and then a vote that, I, that the task force needs to take, sort of the timing of all that. Do we have okay. any ideas about it? The task force um, will need to probably be the, the, the body that makes a recommendation mm -hmm. as to which to go forward on, and then, then there's going to be timing in terms of town meeting, debt exclusion overrides. Mm -hmm. there's a, the debt exclusion, however, the scheduling of that is a selectman decision. Right, right. Um, the decision before this committee are two things. If we go with Gibbs, we have to decide which, which we're going to do, okay. single grade or six through eight. The, the other, the other um, vote that you're going to have to take down the road is taking the Gibbs back because the lease mm -hmm. ends in June, mm -hmm. and that's the timing in which, the, between now and the end of mm -hmm. June, that vote has to be taken as to whether you're gonna continue to excise it. So the other vote, when, do, what, what timing would we need to do to take that vote, about the, the model, the education model? Um, I don't know exactly yet, because I don't know how long I don't have the proposal yet in terms of how long it's going to take, but my guess is that if we begin it, probably the sooner the better in April-ish. Uh, because, I mean, as I said, most of, regardless of which decision it is, most of the school is um, going to be the same. Mm -hmm. we're, gonna, mm -hmm. we're gonna have so many classrooms mm -hmm. in, the, in the core areas. It's more with the, um, the smaller spaces. Mm -hmm. I will say that I asked that question of um, Ms. Coles, and she said, you know, the, we can't, people should not have the expectation that this next level of study is really the true cost of it. Right. You never know the cost of a project till you go out to bid, mm -hmm. and you get the bids back. Right. <coughs> um, and when you go into schematics on a project, that's when you can start even sort of changing spaces. Mm -hmm. So this is not in any way uh, precluding. Mm -hmm. So okay. I, I wouldn't think that you'd have to make it in April, but I can find out. But okay. I, I think the conversation and the pros and cons of it mm -hmm. can certainly go forward. Um, mm -hmm. And I know that you're thinking about that too, mm -hmm. in terms yeah. of how to engage mm -hmm. parents in yeah. that conversation. Okay. 
Mr. Heater. I think it's important for us to make this decision informed, have a good discussion as soon as possible based on the discussion the other night to go out. I agree with Dr. Bodie, you're not gonna have a definitive cost factor that we can go to the bank on, but if we're gonna have a six to eight, that part of the configuration, as Dr. Bodie said, may expand language programs and things of that nature as opposed to one grade. I think it's important for the people that are going to be doing the study that we're talking about, have a, a general idea of what the program that they, they, they're mm -hmm. going to be asked to look at and get the thing on. The other thing I would ask the chair, again, uh, to have Dr. Bodie talk to council uh, for the proper language and uh, for notification of the tenants. Mm -hmm. uh, I want to make sure that we're doing that as the, it's a definitive vote that we're going that way. I think that's the direction we're going, but at the same time, it's important to have the correct language uh, and the timing. Thank you. Okay, uh, I think the consensus of the committee is that we'd like to have that language, and I would hope that we'd have that for the next meeting. Um, whether we act upon it or not uh, is up to us, but I think that to have it in hand is important. Dr. Allison Ampey. Um, thank you. I appreciate that you sent us the information that you sent to the task force um, a couple of nights ago. Um, I've been thinking a lot since your recommendation came out about the six versus six through eight. Um, and how are we going to make that choice? Um, things that are coming up to my mind are how much will it cost? I mean, will there be a cost differential? And I, the back of envelope calculations that I'm doing suggest that there would be a significant okay. cost differential. And I think we need that as a number um, for, as part of our discussion, it needs to include, we, we probably would get rid of busing costs so we need to know what those numbers are. But um, I can show you how I was coming up with numbers, just making guesses of what the split would be and what the class size is, and then trying to deal in things. But as I've been thinking about this as a school committee member who's going to have to make this decision, a 6-8 versus a 6, I can see lots of pluses for the 6-8. But my concern is when I think back over all the past years, the complaints that we've heard, I'd say inequity has been mm -hmm. a core of almost all of them, I especially things that come up with really upset people. Mm -hmm. And when I think about our budget and how tight our budget is and think about adding, I was coming up with hundreds of thousands of dollars of costs of having it be a split school, I mean, two split middle schools. Um, as opposed to a single grade. I'm having a really hard time justifying those additional costs and trying to figure out how are we going to maintain equity of education for all of our students across the town. Um, and I'm also concerned that the buildings are inherently unequal. Mm -hmm. And you're going to, just because the buildings are so different, mm -hmm. because we can't <laughs> offer people the option of you know, open enrollment, go to either middle school or something, um, that we're, if we go to a split middle school, we're setting up a situation where we're just, we're adding to the inequity, and I'm mm -hmm. concerned about this. And I think we need, there's numbers that we need to add to it, but we also need to be thinking about this. I can give you lots of reasons why it would be good to have the split middle schools, but I'm really worried uh, that the numbers, to me, maintaining equity is addressing the main theme that I've heard from people all along for, for multiple years. And uh, so that's something I'm really looking hard at. Mm -hmm. So, I, I've actually done that, and I can give you where my, my calculations are. I should have sent that to you as well. <laughs> Um, yes, you're absolutely correct. There's going to be incremental costs. There's always going to be costs in terms of enrollment growth. Mm -hmm. But there are going to be incremental costs, and I think they're in the neighborhood of $700,000, $750,000 that would be ongoing. Yep. I think mm -hmm. the sixth grade there would be a little less, uh, just because a part of the cost you can't entirely capture is like the 
parts of people when you move them. And, and that's actually when we have this discussion, we need to talk about that. But um, no, that is, that is a factor. And if, if I thought, frankly, if I thought that an addition was feasible, it was a good site for an addition, I think that's the direction I would go, but I don't see it feasible. Yeah. yeah. I wasn't trying to suggest yeah. doing the addition. It yeah. was just, yeah. mm -hmm. I, I'm concerned about incremental cost mm -hmm. of doing a split middle school as opposed to a sixth grade and seven, eight. Mm -hmm. That when you, mm -hmm. you have two mm -hmm. schools which are both smaller mm -hmm. and there's just inefficiencies because when you break the kids down into classes, you end up having to add in another teacher over here. Whereas mm -hmm. right. when mm -hmm. you have the whole group, you can just mm -hmm. moving them all out. Mm -hmm. That's exactly right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um, Mr. Thielman, were you? I, I thought Mrs. Starks had her hand up first. Okay. <clears throat> I just I wanted to um, also bring up the discussion we had about the cost. Mm -hmm. um, we talked uh, with finance mm -hmm. chair, and I didn't know if you were yeah, going to. We're going to go there. I got to go there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You want bring? You want to bring it up? Bring that. Yes. Okay. I'm bringing we haven't talked. I just was talking about Audison. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But should we talk about Thompson right now? Mm -hmm. Well, no. I mean the cost of the doing study. the the study. The cost of doing the study, um, yes. Well, I've, I've talked about that with, uh, with Ms. Coles, and I just have to wait and see what the proposal is. And we will work with Finance Committee to find the money. The, the, I think that, it, I think that I've narrowed it down to, I think, what people need to, and if we can keep it under what the procurement number is without having to go out to bid, that would be ideal. Because time is of the essence when you have to go out and get quotes and it just takes much more time. <coughs> I, I think it can be, but I don't know for a fact. Now, where are we gonna get the money to do this? The Finance Committee has suggested that we do, take it out of school funds and um, take it out of reserve accounts. Another, another possibility is that they would share the cost with us out of their reserve fund. And I also want to remind you that we have $200,000 sitting in the Finance Committee Reserve Fund, mm -hmm. separate and apart from theirs, but that, I, that we have a article to move that money to the stabilization account, special ed stabilization account. It's possible, because it's not earmarked now, to use some of that money. Uh, one question that came up at the uh, committee meeting was could we when a debt exclusion goes out could the money be reimbursed mm -hmm. and um, one member said didn't think it was illegal uh, how the mechanism would work so I think we could do that I, I, I think if we I think that's the best way of going forward because otherwise we're going to have to wait much longer and the longer we wait um, the you know the the less chance we're going to have to be able to get this done in the time frame we need to get it done. Yeah, so I, I just wanted to make sure people understood. I thought it was a gracious offer by Mr. Tosti. I mean, it, he spoke <clears throat> um, and said, listen, I'm chair of the Finance Committee. I can't speak for them. They would have to vote on this. But what if we shared the cost? What if it was a 50-50? We'll take some money out of our budget, you take some money out of your budget, and we'll get it done right away. And you know, I think everyone was very um, eager to get this underway uh, because um, one of the things that John uh, was saying, um, who's Cole? the engineer who's on the, on the committee, John <clears throat> Coles, right? Architect. Um, was saying that, you know, we're a very tight squeeze to make it in for the, you know, 18 school year. Mm -hmm. And so anything we can do to kind of pull it up. And so we said, well, if we can start this right now, mm -hmm. um, but we don't have the money right now because we haven't asked for the money. And so Al said, well, why don't we think about splitting it? So he was willing to go back to the finance committee and ask them and see what they thought. And so it was very gracious. And, it was. Um, I thought yeah, it was a gracious way to kind of move it all forward and really a really made me think that they also are starting to see how how quickly we need to solve this problem mm -hmm. um, and that they are also working on it. So I, I was I thought that, that was really a good outcome of that meeting. Mr. Thielman. So the, the school enrollment task force voted to uh, have us come back at the next meeting with a vote by the school committee authorizing the superintendent to work with the chair of the finance committee 
to identify funds in both budgets for a study of Otteson, Gibbs, and Thompson. <clears throat> and so our task tonight is to pass that motion, direct the superintendent to identify funds, and then for her to report back at the meeting on March 9th? 20-something. No. no, you're no. right. It's March much earlier 10th. in March. 9th? 10th? 9th? I don't know. March 9th. So, no, Thielman, no. you're Eighth, making a motion. So, I made the motion. Uh, Mr. Fitzgerald, do you, uh, do you know what the motion is? I'll do it again. So, do it again. <clears throat> moved <laughs> that the uh, superintendent is directed to identify funds within the school budget or its reserve. Mm. Uh, to finance with the finance committee, to fund with the finance committee a uh, architectural study of the Otteson, the Gibbs, and the Thompson expansion. Second. Okay, moved and seconded. Uh, any discussion on the motion, uh, Dr. Seuss? So th the understanding is that this is a much bigger <coughs> study than just going to Lori and sort of, mm -hmm. this is the, the study that they, they were pushing for at the task force. The study they're pushing for is larger than is going to Lori, but I yeah. trust the superintendent to be in touch with members of the school enrollment task force to see if there might be a, a way to do this without going through the procurement process right, right, that right, okay. from Massachusetts. Okay. So okay. she's inclined to do that. Mm -hmm. And if she can come up with a it. solution <coughs> that meets everyone's mm -hmm. uh, expectations, great. If we can't, then we have to go through the procurement and process. It's, it's quicker if we can't, yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. okay. Any other discussion on the motion? Dr. Allison Ampey. I just wanted to clarify. So my understanding, the reason that we're looking at what the cost of an addition at the Audison is, is just because as we go out to the voters for debt exclusions, mm -hmm. we need to, it's due diligence. Mm -hmm. right. yes. due exactly. diligence. Exactly. It's not that we're expecting to go down no. that exactly. plan. Right. It, it's exactly. that it's yes. more for due diligence yeah. and showing that this is not funny. Okay. Well, it's due diligence and also if we... God forbid, do a debt exclusion vote that doesn't pre prevail for the Gibbs, then there's a fallback plan that we could, you know. So, but, but I think the larger, the larger issue, the, the better way to look at this is that it gives the voters um, evidence that we've done our due diligence, we're able to present to the voters that we looked at all of these different options, and the only viable option is the Gibbs for many reasons. One, we can't expand the Addison. Two, we would lose the Gibbs facility if we didn't do this because it's not in good shape. Right. Um, three, uh, depending on what we decide to do, whether it's sixth grade or, or, or sixth or eight, hopefully we can argue before the voters that it's educationally sound. Mm -hmm. You know, that's important. Um, so for all those reasons, we're doing that. Okay. That study, yeah. Okay. Any other commentary? Yeah, Dr. Seuss. Oh, this is back to the previous discussion. Um, uh, we're on the motion. On the motion. No, no, sorry. Okay. On the motion, any further discussion? Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Uh, that's unanimous. Thank you. Now, Dr. Seuss, you can go Sorry. back to the rest <laughs> of the discussion. So just back to the discussion about um, if, if we take over Gibbs, which is what we seem likely to be voting for, um, whether we should go for a sixth grade or a <laughs> six through eight. Um, I, was, I think I've mentioned this before. I was at a room in Bishop at the PTO meeting where initially parents were 90% opposed to a single grade option, sixth mm -hmm. grade option. And a couple of teachers in the room spoke up and talked about why they thought a sixth grade only option was educationally valuable. Mm -hmm. And after those teachers spoke, um, the room shifted. Mm -hmm. And it was very interesting. Mm -hmm. and, and to realize, I mean, this is, uh, you know, we don't understand these models because we haven't seen them before. So that, it, that, that people's opinions shift over time. I would urge the superintendent to reach out to the community mm -hmm. at Needham. I mean, I think we, mm -hmm. what we as a community need is to hear from those educators about the, the benefits and disadvantages of what they've seen mm -hmm. um, in a public forum at the school mm -hmm. committee. I, I, I sort of think that that's our next step, I think. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Dr. Bowden, do you want to comment any further on that? No, I think okay. that's, that's yeah. fine. Mm -hmm. um, Mr. Hainer. I think the discussion we're having now is great, but it, it, we need to have definitive numbers on cost and programs, both the education and the economic aspect of the mm -hmm. thing. 
Uh, hopefully, it'll be the uh, education aspect that drives it. But where we are, cost also is a, is a determiner. Mm -hmm. but we need that information. And when we get that digested, then have the discussion. And that's the discussion on the configuration. <laughs> yes. Uh, I would ask that we do this as soon as possible mm -hmm. because going forward in the study, we just, uh, mm -hmm. I think that's an integral part of the direction of that study. If we're doing a one grade as opposed to a multi grade. Mm -hmm. Mr. Thielman. So the other thing, uh, so regarding the vote to not renew the uh, lease mm -hmm. for the tenants of the Gibbs. I think that's something that we can't just we can't just say we're going to get a uh, the language from the superintendent next week and then take a vote. I think we got to we got to announce the date we're going to take the vote because we need to hear from all mm -hmm. people in the community. Yes, on that. Wait, may I? Mm -hmm. So actually, I think the scope of your decision making in this topic is whether you're going to continue to excise it. Mm -hmm. Correct. I think the awarding of leases is mm -hmm. in the realm of the. Of mm -hmm. the yes, that's right. Of the. <clears throat> Selectman. Mm. Right. So I think the question, the question is, you know, I think I know where, the, where, where, where we're going to go. I think I know where I'm going to go. But I think it's important that we're, there's due process and mm -hmm. we allow the public to have input. I think it's an important part of the culture of the town. Mm -hmm. So um, I'm, I'm uncomfortable with the idea of just doing it mm -hmm. next week when we get language. Mm -hmm. And I'm wondering when you think, Dr. Bodie, when you think is a good time to do it? I, I really need to find out when the propo when the study can be done what's what how much time is it going to take okay. and i probably might know that in a couple of days and i can let you know okay we just had the tuesday we just had the meeting tuesday night yeah. put the proposal mm -hmm. out there asking for a proposal and so it may not be till next week i get an answer all right so i think we need i think it needs to be announced in the agenda well in advance we're going to take this vote and it needs to be clear so that we can hear from Everybody. I think it needs to be uh, uh, an item in the next agenda. And we can have a discussion on it. We can have people coming in um, if they so choose to discuss it. Uh, but I think that it needs to be in our agenda for the next meeting so we can get. And we'd have a, a proposed vote in hand as a roadmap for where we are going because having that vote out there is really sort of like a warrant article. It's a warning that this is serious. We're about to make the decision. This is the language of a proposed vote. We've asked for the language. Um, so that it, so it's sitting there and, and it doesn't come as a surprise. But my concern, and, and I don't want to get into a debate here on, as, as the chair, if I were a member sitting out there I'd be forceful on this, but uh, I worry about the long-term impact of any kind of delay. Uh, at this point, I'm looking at two proposals. If we are heading towards a Gibbs proposal, then it is not in our advantage to allow that process to delay because there are kids who need to be housed and educated, and it will be more costly and more disruptive if we lose the opportunity to open that building in fiscal 18. So we can study, we can prepare, we can do everything we need to do, but I don't want this committee to lose momentum to the point where something we've done has put us in a position where we can't achieve a, a, a September 18th deadline. Yeah, but I think that can happen mm -hmm. <coughs> whenever we take the vote. I don't think, because mm -hmm. I think there's two things going on. One is, is the desire for the study. Mm -hmm. And so, and the other thing is, is so the vote, can, the vote doesn't, it can, if you want it, you're the chair. So if you want to put in the agenda for the 10th, it takes place in the 10th. I, do we want to coordinate this with the school enrollment task force? Mm -hmm. Yeah. <coughs> I mean, it would coordinate the, the which, yeah, which to, group? To, yeah. I mean, which, you know, I would like the administrators to have a chance to sort of talk about this. Yeah. I'll mm -hmm. tell you why. Because I've heard a lot of arguments as to one choice over the other. And is but this configuration? You, no, they, yeah, that's different. Oh. Are we back to configuration? No, 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 we're no, not configuration. No. We're talking about. We're only talking about, about the Gibbs vote. Gibbs, yeah. The, the Gibbs yeah. vote. Oh, the Gibbs vote. Sorry mm -hmm. about that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, 
I think that it's it's been delegated to the task force to make a recommendation yeah. and to make the recommendation will come back here to the committee. And, a, and then we can vote affirm on it. Mm -hmm. But the task force is the one, and then the, the task force will look at what the next steps are going to be in terms of moving it forward. So we're trying to build a coalition mm -hmm. to, yes. to get mm -hmm. a debt, debt override, debt exclusion. Mm -hmm. yes. That's what all of this yes. is about. <coughs> so I think a, a, an appropriate process would be next, you know, two Tuesday nights from now, March. Mar March 24th. No, 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 March. Uh, Oh, before <laughs> the March, March, March 10th. 10th, March 10th. No, no, the school, the task the next force. Our next 8th, the next 8th, March 8th. Task force is meeting on the 8th. <coughs> yeah, March 8th. So at the March 8th task force meeting, I think you and you and the, the town manager do, do the agenda. I thought it was April 8th. No, no it's no, March, March, March 8th. 8th. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Our yeah. next meeting is March 10th. Okay. <laughs> All right, March 8th. March 8th. So March 8th, <laughs> the school <laughs> enrollment task force meets. I think on the since we're in a public meeting, I can talk about this. On March 8th at that meeting, yeah. there should be an agenda item, uh, Gibbs decision. Yes. Okay. And then good. once that, and then and then once we have that, then we can come to the school committee on the 10th. But I don't know whether what the task force has yeah. asked for yeah. can be accomplished by then. I, I I thought it was April 8th, but no. I can. March 8th. March 8th, 8th no. is the meeting. Mm -hmm. yep. The ask at the task force yeah. was for us to take a vote authorizing you to find money. Mm -hmm. to do the study and for you to come back at the meeting on the 8th with a cost, a cost for and the a study. timeline and a for timeline the study. for a study that was it <laughs> not to have the study but the cost and the timeline for the study which means they that's why it was only going to be two weeks away mm -hmm. and at that meeting i think we should if we're going to take the vote as a school committee i think we should we should put the with the, put the gibbs question on the table okay mr heener <laughs> that makes sense i asked for earlier was that the superintendent get the, a legal opinion on drafting it. Didn't ask for it for the next meeting or whatever, just so we have that in hand. Yes. Whenever we decide to do it, we have the right thing going. The other night, unless I was on another planet, the consensus, no vote taken, was that we're heading to Gibbs. So that would be in line with having the legal opinion uh, ready for us to go forward. Everything else that you just said, as far as getting the cost or get an estimate, was tasked to the superintendent and the town manager for having us ready but to go forward we part of our job and that is our job is to make that decision on the configuration so on our meeting for the 10th of march we need to have or hopefully to the committee before it, so we can be prepared for a discussion those elements of the economic and the educational aspects of a one grade or a multi-grade going forward on that so if we take a vote on the 10th to, to uh, notify the tenants, we'll be prepared. If we defer that to a later date, we can defer <coughs> it. My con I, I want to be able to talk about it at the next meeting, which is why I want it on the agenda. And I want the language available at the next meeting so we know what decision we would need to be taking. That's why I structured it that way. I'm not saying we need to take the vote at the next meeting, but I want both things to happen at the next meeting to have the ability to talk about it and knowledge of what we're talking about. And because about. it's a legal document, mm -hmm. we need to have that clear in our mind mm -hmm. what we have to do and the steps we have to do. Yeah, I, I want that mm -hmm. perfectly outlined. So if we're going to the Gibbs option, we have everything we need in hand to go and do that. That's all I'm asking mm. for. I'm not asking to force a decision on, on, on the 10th. Uh, I, 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 Dr. Allison Ampey. Um, I just wanted to follow up. Mm -hmm. I think we don't want just the language of what the vote is. We need to understand the mechanism, mm -hmm. who's the, who does the notification, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean, and what, what our role mm -hmm. is, in, is in it and also what the options are after that, because I'm thinking mm -hmm. we can vote to, or, or we can direct mm -hmm. whoever to vote to not renew the lease, but mm -hmm. that doesn't necessarily mean that we are telling them that they have to leave. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's a separate thing. We need to understand what all the moving parts are here mm -hmm. so that we understand when decisions need yeah. to be made, because exactly. we may have notification mm -hmm. deadlines or we, meaning the town, may have notification deadlines for when, even if we don't renew their lease, that we have to say a year ahead that you're going to have to leave. That's different. 
Uh, Superintendent Bodie, is this something that would uh, town council would I be will addressing? Definitely talk to, I will definitely talk to town council. I think that your vote needs to wait until the task force makes a recommendation. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. yeah, I think so, that's pretty yeah. important. And that's not going to happen until we get the outcome of the thing that we're trying to pay for. Yeah. Right. So none of this is going to happen yeah. at our next meeting. Yeah. Right. So I think it's, I'm not saying what it's we were happen. trying to do was make sure that the study happened yeah. before June 30th yeah. so that we could make the vote right. before <laughs> June 30th. This right. vote is going to be very tight. It is not going to be in March. It is not going to be in April. Right. It's going to be in May or early June. Mm -hmm. yeah. Because we won't, yeah. Because we won't have the information. We won't have the outcome yeah. of the study. Well, I want, I want, oh, hold on, hold on. Yeah. I, I want to know <coughs> what the path is. Yeah. And, and, and you know, where where we take the vote may be governed by what the uh, what what our advice is is what the steps that we need to do are vis-a-vis -vis the task force, vis-a-vis -vis town meeting, vis-a-vis -vis the selectmen putting something on the ballot for a debt exclusion. I mean, these all come into play, but we need to know what our role in this is. Now, the, the one thing that I, the other thing I would say is that the task force took the other options off the table, and I think that was appropriate. I think they looked at them and said it's too costly or too impractical. Um, I look at an addition at Audison is being impractical. I, if I had my way, I'd be taking that off the table and using our prerogative to say that's the one that we can't live with educationally, that you can't put 1,400 kids up on that site. Uh, the architectural problems are just huge trying to blast into that, uh, into that ledge across the parking lot and then to try to come back. It, that is not a su suitable site for a bigger school and I don't think that it's in our interest to have the largest middle school in the state. That, that's my opinion. Um, and if I could, I'd take that option off the table and we, we'd be moving forward right now. But we've, got, we've made the commitment to do the study. But I also want to have every bit of language and process and procedure we have in hand so that we do not find ourselves delayed at some point where we're looking around, figuring out what to do, and next thing you know, we're not gonna, we, we've, we've missed something that gets us to a point where we can't have this open in 2018. And that's my goal, is to get this done by 2018 because the cost and the disruption of, of extending it past that date is, is major. And I think that in terms, we have sat here as good listeners. We presented this problem to the, the town almost a year ago. And we've had town hall forums, we've had uh, lots of engagement by the community, lots of people going out talking to folks. We have done everything we can to put, to solicit every option, to vet every option. Uh, we've done a great job. I think that it's time that we start moving forward because of the urgency. That, that's just where I'm standing. And uh, unfortunately as a chair, you know, I, I sound a little too proactive in this. I realize that. I need to defer to go where the committee wants to go, but I, I, the only thing I can say is let's have all our ducks in line, let's have all our papers and our votes and, and a clear st uh, sense of the process in line so we know what to do and then can and have wait. a sense of when we need to hit certain steps in order to make that happen by 2018. That, that's my position. I'm not going to try to talk you into doing anything, but I want those decision points to be clear and ha have us with the resources to make them when it needs to happen. And if uh, the discussion tonight is building it, if the members here who are on the task force are bringing back sort of a message in their mind as to what we're thinking, that's not a bad thing. Um, even without a vote saying that the, the the school committee wants to go in a certain direction, which I wouldn't call for at this point anyway. But I, I think that the reason why we're having this conversation now is so that everybody in this room has a chance to deliberate and that the community and the task force and each other have a sense of where each member is. So I, I'd sort of like to go around the room very quickly to get a sense of where people are thinking, whether or not Audison is a 
um, viable option, <coughs> and uh, if they are committed to expediting this to have a school open in 2018. Uh, just a statement of opinion or thoughts on, on those two questions. And I'll... Would you repeat them again, please? Yeah, I basically, the question is, do you, do you, do, if there are members here who think that Audison is a viable option that, that we should spend time thinking about, or if, or the, we're almost certainly going to Gibbs, and then uh, are, is there a commitment to moving this to the point of getting a school open in 2018? Mr. Hayner. I do not think uh, Audison's an option, given all the reasons Dr. Bode has already stated. I think uh, going forward with Gibbs, and I support doing it as ex quickly as we can with due diligence to open it in 18. Okay, Mr. Pierce. What he said. Okay, <laughs> Dr. Allison Ampey. Pretty much what they said. I, I'd like to see the numbers that are coming in, but it sounds I can't figure out how we could possibly put a, a workable addition at Audison. Thank you. M Ms. Starks. Yeah, if what comes back is that there really is no way to make a workable solution up there, then I'm absolutely for whatever the superintendent recommends. Mm -hmm. Mr. Thielman. Yeah, I, mean, I think once the report comes back from the architects and technicians, I'd probably be where Ms. Starks is and accept the superintendent's recommendation. Dr. Seuss. Um, I think I agree with the superintendent that theoretically a large middle school could work. I think if we were building one from scratch, we could create a structure that would work. Mm -hmm. But given the current configuration, mm -hmm. it doesn't work. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah. I, I cannot support building it, obviously. Uh, and I, I would like to see us move as expeditiously as possible to get a building open in 2018. Mr. Thielman. So I think, <coughs> I think we're in a line. I don't think anyone's expressed a... <coughs> An opinion opposed to the chair's opinion. No one's said anything opposite of what you've said. Mm -hmm. I think the question is, um, are you, so to clarify, are you proposing a vote on the 10th? No. Okay. So I'm, not, not. Vo I'm not proposing any vote in the 10th. Okay, good. This little exercise was a, a point so <coughs> that the three of you who are on the task force can go back with a sense of this board after this conversation and that the, the people who are watching us and the news and the folks in the media can report back our thinking okay. uh, so that the community gets an understanding of where we are looking at the data that we have today and sort of seeing how we're sketching things out for the future. So I, I would like to have a proposed vote and as much information as possible for the 10th with the provision that we wouldn't be voting it on the 10th but that we'd have it there because that's what we're talking about. That's the direction that we're, we seem to be moving toward and that we need to know what we would need to do to execute that if indeed that's where we're going. Okay, so I still have the floor. Mm -hmm. So in addition, in addition uh, to that information on a legal vote, it's not, it's not a complicated question. Mm -hmm. It's, you know, the school, the school mm -hmm. department is gonna repossess mm -hmm the Gibbs School mm -hmm. on June 30th, 2017. That's probably, mm -hmm. it's, or that's pretty, it's a one sentence mm -hmm. vote, something like that. But in addition to that, mm -hmm. I think one thing we need to be clear on, on March 10th, mm -hmm. or actually by March 8th, for you is that, what Lori tells you about a, a timeline. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, <clears throat> the timeline for the research. Mm -hmm. I'll, get that, the, mm -hmm. I'll get that information that you're looking for in terms of what the vote needs to be. As far as, um, you know, it did occur to me that it probably would be a good idea if mm -hmm. the committee could authorize me, I think it may have been covered on, under your motion, to be able, besides identify the funds, but to be able to go ahead and use the funds. Yeah, I, 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 yeah, yeah. I, uh, yes. um, because mm -hmm. it might be possible, <laughs> once we get a proposal, to just start moving forward. Mm -hmm. And we may even have before that date um, a, a ten, some tentative numbers as well. Mm -hmm. Because I wouldn't want to hold it up if we can get this thing off the ground next week. Well, I think you got to, I think we got to, you know, I, I think you have to talk to some members of the task force who have an idea that, I mean, there were different 
opinions about the depth of the research that needed to be done. Right. Okay, because yeah. some people wanted an in-depth look at mechanicals in the building, the entire HVAC in both uh, sites. Um, so that's a level of technicality that you and the architect on the task force and Lori Coles should have. That's a discussion you guys should have, and I'm going to defer to wherever you guys come up with. Yeah, <clears throat> right. Uh, what we will do as soon as I get the proposal, send it out to the task force, and I'll include all of you in yeah. getting a copy of it as well. Um, actually, I had a slightly different interpretation of what the task force was asking for, besides all you've said. I had the interpretation that go forward and get this done and report back. Um, that was my interpretation of it. And so Maybe I check moved on it very quickly I to would start moving check. this get I don't, done. I do not think that's, that I was thought not. they okay. wanted something along the FM, HMFH type reports that took forever because that's what John kept that's saying. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Is like he was saying, this yep. is gonna take, because so the they fall. all thought it was gonna take hundreds of thousands of dollars yep. and yep. weeks and weeks of procurement and time. Yep. Um, and that's why we wanted to do it ASAP because in order to get it done before June so that we could make that vote, no, I, that's, no, that's why it wasn't just a... But if it doesn't and we can get what, the, what satisfies the task force, right. can I move forward? So it seems like yes, what we can, need is think, some clarity okay, from the task force. Hold on. I think you need to talk to the task force. Mm -hmm. Do you need to talk well, to the chairman of the Permanent Town Building Committee who raised <coughs> and get clarity from him and maybe do a conference call with the chairman of the public uh, per permanent town building committee and the architect from HMFH and you to make sure you're all on the same page because he drove that just part of the discussion. Right. Mm -hmm. Mr. Hainer. I support letting the superintendent go forward with only one caveat that that going forward there is some maneuverability for us from when we decide which way the programs are going to go. That's all. Oh, yeah. Oh, in terms, yeah. oh, yeah. yeah. I mean, that's, that's all. Yeah. That's different. Just that's want to make later. that clear. Look, that's great, all. Great configuration is really secondary. Secondary to the whole process. Yeah. You know, we, if we, all I'm concerned with, if that is part, if somewhere along the line, whichever study we're going with, if that ends up being part of the study, it has to have that flexibility. If it's not part of the study, you indicated earlier that 90% or 70% of the building is going to be the same whether it's uh, one or multiple grade, but there may be some difference. If that's not a consideration, I'm an educator, I'm not a, an architect by any means. No. If that isn't a factor in the thing, then I have no problem. It, and it I think, I think Configura as, remember, configuration is ours, it's not the task force. Right, but if that study comes back and the study is only addressing one configuration, it's going to be hard for us to make a, a decision. I don't think, you know, we're talking, about, we're talking about renovating the same amount of square feet, no, no matter how we divide up the rooms. A then I misunderstood because I thought that uh, Dr. Body indicated that there may be more rooms right. if it's a multi-grade uh, program as, as opposed yeah. to well, a It's going to be configured no, differently but we, with the, the same building, right? Yes. yes. Yeah. So that's not the issue. Fine. That's not the issue. Okay. And we're not going to cede our authority on that. Uh, I'm not suggesting we are. Yeah. I, can I just make a comment on that? Go ahead. I, I don't think that it would, it, would, it would impact at all this level of study. Mm -hmm. Where it will impact is the next when you actually have to do the schematics on it. Mm -hmm. Nobody's expecting that this study is going to be the schematic drawings right. of either proposals. Right. It can't be. Because then you're into hundreds of thousands mm -hmm. of dollars. Mm -hmm. That wasn't the intent. I didn't. No, that, that that's was definitely not the intent. Not the intent. Yeah. John Cole suggested a similar program to what we did for uh, Stratton, and that was a, that was a significant cost to do that study, and it took a considerable amount of time. That's where John was coming from the other night, mm -hmm. and I didn't hear it. We, we all left there with different ideas. We came to a consensus, but what we came to consensus with, I think we came up with different thoughts. Okay, Dr. Allison Ampy. Um, I just wanted to point out that. I understand we're going out for three studies and that I don't I think we could suggest that they don't all have to be done at the same time that and we should tell them which one we want done first I'm thinking is Gibbs but mm -hmm. maybe it's Thompson I don't know anyway just idea. we should be thinking about that I like that well the one all right so we should we talk about the elementary school now mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. really this has all been about Addison mm -hmm. all right um, I still recommend that we add six classrooms mm -hmm. onto Thompson 
And the schedule is this, that if we're going to have that building, the, the addition and complete it in September 17, we would need to begin construction and so have everything ready for construction by late November next year. It takes 10 months. That's inquiring about this. So the next step in Thompson actually would be to begin the design process. And this is the issue because this is where we're going to have to go out in a bid format because the design process is not going to be under the procurement limit. Mm -hmm. um, it may be that the other will not either once I get a proposal back. It might not be, but right now it's hovering, it's hovering there because I know how much we spent on Stratton. So um, we're going to have to go out for design, and if we wait to town meeting to identify the money, um, that might be a little late in getting going on it. So that was actually one of the suggestions from uh, Mr. Tosti is that we look at where we could, the school department could find money in its budget to go forward with that process mm -hmm. now. And th that was also part of the offer. Can mm -hmm. we work yeah. with you on this? Mm -hmm. So that we're, we're I don't, I don't want to really put a number on it, but we're talking about a couple, we're talking in the hundreds of thousands, a couple hundred thousand on this going into that. Now, one of the things that was helpful to know is if we get a debt exclusion on this, that the money that we expend can be replaced. Mm -hmm. So that's good. I'm not sure what the process will be, but there's an intent that that could happen. So I would like to go forward and get this process going. Mm -hmm. Now, the reason why there's some hesitation in going full steam is that members of the task force want to be sure that the numbers that we're going to see at, the, at Thompson and Hardy are going to actually uh, be the same as the McKibben numbers and justify this. And they want to wait until the fall. But if you wait until the fall to begin the whole process, it's not going to happen in the time we want. Now, uh, granted, this is an investment, and <coughs> we might go forward with it. I mean, we're still holding on to these documents, but at the same time, it's an investment that we do run a slight risk that we don't get the debt exclusion. Um, I don't think we're going to have an issue with the numbers, frankly, because the McKibben numbers were, were spot on on East Arlington. But that is a risk. And the question I have for you tonight is whether you are willing to give me the authorization to go forward with this process financially. Mr. I've had so, my hand up. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. uh, the chair can. <laughs> go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Sorry. Okay. The only problem I have with any of this is that there has been a a, a recent proposal um, that someone brought forward that only involves us having to renovate the Gibbs, and that is that we turn all of our elementary schools into K to six schools, and we turn the Gibbs into an additional K to six school. It solves both problems. Where do we put the extra grade? <laughs> they, in the school, in the elementary You redistrict school. so that now we have the Gibbs as another K to six school, which is where the problem is anyway. Mm -hmm. So now we have three elementary schools in that end of town. We have classrooms in the other schools. That's what we have, right? And the math that has been done says that if we do that, we have two empty classrooms and I don't know anything educationally about how that is, but that is another option, and it means that we don't need an addition to Thompson, but we do still need to renovate Gibbs. So I still think that that option, which I know it's only, it's very high level right now, it was just an accounting of classrooms and kind of, you know, you know, head, you know, high level thinking about, you know, if you put this many sixth grades in these schools and you then turn the Gibbs into another K to six, if that's what you can do. But I don't know if that's possible. I don't know if that's, you know, but again, if we're thinking about costs and how we need to move forward, I just want to make sure that that, that idea you, was out there. Can you forward that 
Uh, it was sent to the to task you guys, force people, yeah, yeah. yeah. just for expressness. <coughs> sent it on, but the, you know, the one thing that we note is you, you do have open classrooms at, uh, at, at Stratton and Pierce, but uh, Brackett, Bishop are well over their design right now. And Dallin. Right, and yeah. so it's a, it's a massive redistricting of yeah. students mm -hmm. to make sure that you fill the schools that are, mm -hmm. right, so a lot more Bishop kids end up swip, pivoting into East Arlington. Ooh, that's schools. huge. But it's it, an idea. It's an idea. <laughs> Mr. Thielman. So um, the vote that I, my intention of the vote that we took earlier, the motion included Thompson. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So my understanding of the vote was that you had the authority under that vote to do what you needed to do in terms of mm -hmm. finding mm -hmm. out the cost of mm -hmm. uh, a design of the Thompson. Mm -hmm. So the, my, my, my mm -hmm. vote, I think, I think it was pretty clear in that, that mm -hmm. it was all three, mm -hmm. all three yeah. things. You, did, you yeah. did specifically state all three so, schools yeah. in your vote. Now regarding this, the proposal to go K-6, have uh, eight K-6 schools in the town of Arlington, that is a, uh, you know, I, I wasn't here when the, when the district went through this conversation about whether or not they have a 6th, 7th, and 8th grade in the middle school, but, it, but I read a little bit about it because I got elected in 2003, wasn't that far away from that, and I learned a lot about it uh, in that time, and there was, there were, it felt like, from what I read and heard, years of conversation mm -hmm. about whether to make that move. So to all of a sudden go from a middle school model back to a K-6 through model it requires research, reflection, and lots of participation by lots of people in the town. So while so I- So does pulling out the sixth grade and having it separate. That's well, also breaking the middle school model. Yeah, but let me-, let me, let me, let me <laughs> Yeah, but I, I think there's- No, it's, it's similar, it's very it's similar. It's more consistent. It's more consistent also, I mean, Needham has done it well. We can, we can look at what Needham's done in the sixth yeah, grade. A lot of towns have K to sixes too, yeah, yeah, and K to eights. Well, we, but I mean, to embark upon a K through six to conversation. I mean, how long would it take to really do the research, think about it among faculty and staff? I don't know. And a whole and a district this size? It's, it's not so much the research, it's the discussion that would need to happen and redistricting. Mm -hmm. um, a couple of years to well, redistrict. Redistricting for the limited amount that we did took a long time yeah. and a lot of participation. It would take a lot of, it would be a massive redistricting to do elements. this um, yeah. for mm -hmm. sure mm -hmm. um, because you're correct that that not that only two of the schools have extra classrooms and in fact it's not even clear as we're going through um, some some issues around Stratton whether we really will have three because of some other issues that come up in terms of specials so th there they will be really tight to assume that they could have two classes at Pierce that would be sixth grade. That, that part, I think, is fine. The three at Stratton may be a little bit more problematic. But um, the other schools would not. So there would be a massive redistricting in order to do this. It would be a substantial change in curriculum. Uh, one obvious one would be world language. That would, would change for sure. Mm -hmm. Now, that may change anyway in a split in some, in some respects. Um, it's, a, it's a time issue, and if, if the town wants to engage in this, the issue is what are we going to do the year after next at Thompson? So, yeah, I mean, I think the, I think the K through six question is a school department and school committee conversation. It is. The big issue, if you want to do K to six, it still mm -hmm. doesn't, the, it's, we still have to have Gibbs. Mm -hmm. yeah. And you can engage in that kind of, we can still go forward with everything that we need to do to get Gibbs ready. But I will say that if it's a K through six, it would be a different schematics than it would be mm -hmm. if we were gonna do a middle, mm -hmm. middle school mm -hmm. age. So in order to move forward with that in, in any kind of timely way, could you have that decision done and ready to go by the time they have to do schematics and, and construction drawings this fall? Well, we would be we would be re responding to a recommendation made by the superintendent and her staff. So I don't know. The question goes back to you. Could you do all that research and get it? 
<coughs> we could do the research. That uh, us doing the research isn't the issue. Can the town have that level of discussion and consensus? Look how many options have come forward with just yeah. the recent mm -hmm. discussions and how and how much went on with redistricting. I, I think it's a very I think it's a very um, narrow window. So let me just make one last point, then I'll yield the floor, Paul. So <clears throat> the of all of the things that we have to do uh, in the town of Arlington, which is uh, a new high school. Uh, a middle school, uh, a vote on the Minuteman, $36 million, $40 million expense to our town. Um, modulars, the least expensive thing is a $3 million addition to the Thompson mm -hmm. Elementary School. It's the least expensive item. So I don't want to hold that up because we have so many bigger <laughs> challenges ahead of us. That's where I come out. It's, a, it's, it's the least of our problems financially, and it's the least uh, costly option for the voters. <clears throat> it's small potatoes compared to what we're going to do Sorry. over the next few years. So I don't want to stop the Thompson conversation, and I, I just don't want to stop it. And I don't think there's time to stop it. Mm -hmm. uh, because I think if we go down this path, the addition won't be built. And I think that would be a shame. I think if we go down this path, we run the risk of losing the override because we'll get people so angry with us. Well, there's that too. Yeah, <clears throat> uh, Ms. Starks. I just, I think that, you know, I agree that we need to, I just feel like we haven't, I disagree that it, I mean, I'm worried that we do the Thompson, then all of a sudden now then we have to do the Hardy and then we have to do, that's the real problem is that we are, Yes, I know that the Thompson has to be done, but we are running so fast and so furious to do that that we are still not looking at the big picture. The big picture is that it's not just the Thompson, that then it's gonna be the Hardy, and then it's gonna be the Bishop, and then it's gonna be something else. And so yeah, it may be the cheapest, it may look the cheapest, but I think it's the tip of the iceberg. It is the tip of the iceberg on the elementary schools, and the elementary schools need a bigger solution. And I'm not necessarily behind this K to six idea. I'm just saying that it's another way to think about it and it's another way to solve the problem. And it's just as big and just as, you know, I don't think that it's that easy of a decision, the decision we have to make about what we're gonna do in the Gibbs. You know, whether it's one grade or whether it's three grades, whether it's middle school, whether it's K to six, whether it's whatever it is, none of that is going to be easy. And you're not going to have a townwide consensus on whatever you do. So saying that, you know, this, I don't think this is any harder of a decision. I just think it's a different decision. Mr. Hainer. The other night, the consensus we came to was to do a study and all three schools were mentioned. Mm. The idea was for credibility going to the town for the vote on this. Mm -hmm. There was an understanding that night from both parents and, and other people that this was going to be a delay in, in basically putting, having kids stay possibly an additional year mm -hmm. in uh, modular units. But mm -hmm. the credibility factor to get it passed was, was perceived by those in, involved, even understanding that extra year for kids in modular units to get it past the first time was important. To go off, I, I, educationally, I'd love to have it done as fast as I can, and I, I would support that. But before we even go that route, I, I thought we left with a, a united consensus. Mm -hmm. From what I'm hearing just from the three of us, we perceive different things. Mm -hmm. And I'm not knocking anybody else. I, I know mm -hmm. I would be most important, we can get along. So we always find a way to, get, to come to consensus, even when we disagree. I don't want to lose the other three people that were at the table uh, the, the other night by, by saying that you're, we might be jumping the gun. That's all. Okay. Dr. Seuss. Uh, yeah, so I, the K through six model would be harder, I believe, because we would have to do redistricting all at once. We wouldn't have an easy redistricting people coming into kindergarten. We would have to be like, this is it. You know, everyone under the age of whatever um, has to be redistricted. So I think that would be actually really, really hard for the town. And I guess I agree with Dr. Mm -hmm. Bodie that we haven't, we don't have enough time to prepare the town for that. Um, and I agree with uh, Mr. Thielman that we can't risk delaying the Thompson addition. Mm -hmm. um, 
I do want to stress that when we took the vote about the addition, though, we didn't just take a vote on the six classrooms. We also took a vote on looking at expanding core space issues, mm -hmm. which may involve the existing um, envelope. I mean, it might mean reconfiguring the gym's life music space, but um, but I don't want that to be lost in our in the discussions. Okay. That that's a possibility. Yeah. Um. I think we've talked this out. Anything else under the superintendent's report? Yes. <laughs> 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 yes. Well, I think nothing in this time for sure. Um, actually, um, I wanted to um, just mention one uh, great thing, and then I'll turn it over to Laura to have her talk about the park presentation and um, some, some other issues around professional development. Uh, we just got word yesterday that our technology teacher at Audison, Gary Blanchett, mm -hmm. has been notified that he is going to receive the International Technology and Engineering Educator Association National Excellence in wow. Teaching Award in mm -hmm. D.C. Awesome. Wow. Mm -hmm. Excellent. It is excellent. It's, it's quite a recognition. So that actually is happening next week. Mm -hmm. uh, there was a little bit of a, I'm not quite sure what happened, but they, I think they sent it to the wrong email address, I think. <laughs> but we're not sure. But at any rate, mm -hmm. this was, it's tremendous, and I just want people to know that we're going to mm -hmm. get a press release out um, mm -hmm. probably tomorrow. So would you like to talk about the park? The park. Um, so we've mm -hmm. had uh, two meetings thus far for mm -hmm. parents regarding the park. Um, one was just for the Bishop Elementary mm -hmm. School because they're going to do the test online. And then last evening we had um, a presentation at Thompson mm -hmm. um, where we had about uh, 80, 85 parents mm -hmm. um, to discuss it for the, the schools that are going to do the paper test at the elementary. Um, the presentation, I think, was well received. There were a lot of really good uh, questions that were raised. Um, the presentation that we have given last night and the previous time um, will be on the district website as of tomorrow. Um, I've submitted it to Claudia, and she'll be getting it up on the district website. Um, in addition, um, we'll be um, eventually putting up an FAQ because some really good questions came out of that, but we want to make sure we have some very thoughtful answers to those questions prior to um, putting it on the website. And Dr. Bodie will be sending out notification to all the parents when the FAQ gets posted. Um, I wanted to remind parents of Audison students that on March 8th, the OPEC is sponsoring an evening meeting also about park at the Audison so the parents can come and ask questions um, because, of course, Audison will be doing not only doing computer-based testing, but the testing at the middle school is slightly different than it is at the elementary schools. So that presentation will be open. Um, the other thing I just wanted to share with the committee was regarding um, some mini courses. Uh, um, the certification requirements for teachers has changed and they now have to have um, 15 professional development points um, for uh, working with special education students um, along with 15 professional development points for working with ELL students for those mm -hmm. teachers that did not sit for retail. Um, in order to try to make this um, beneficial <coughs> to teachers, but also um, a little less painless, uh, painful than it would be otherwise, um, we have d b um, implemented uh, eight mini courses this spring um, that will all be uh, blended courses. So they'll have one or two face-to-face -face meetings, and the rest of the time the courses will be given online. They're be given by our staff. We're going to have three courses working with ELL students, um, primarily working with um, uh, giving the reading instruction and writing instruction to ELL students and also helping them with their academic language development. And then four additional workshops, um, working with SPED students, again, around uh, reading and writing and also um, setting goals for students that are achievable and helping students figure out what they need to do to work towards those goals. And last, we're going to add, um, <coughs> this is not required for certification, but it's something that we thought was very important. We'll be adding a mini course on cultural competency mm -hmm. um, that will also be run by one of our staff members. Mr. Hainer. The, uh, the mini courses that are required, uh, uh, is it a one-time thing? Or are every, they going to have to be redoing it like this? Every five years, you have to have 15 PDPs dealing with ELL students and 15 PDPs. Would they be different, or would it be just a refresher? Could they be taking the similar course? 
you know, I I don't believe that those things are checked that carefully, but I, I really couldn't okay. say. This is for those that did not take the, the ELL ones are for those that did not have were not required to take retail. So um, basically, the art, music, PE, PE, world language teachers were not required. Um, uh, th those folks didn't need to take one for certification. Basically, the specialists in the, uh, the se secondary would be secondary for the most yeah, part. Yeah, second secondary if they have certain um, subject areas. So it's 15, and, and how many PDPs will each? one of your mini courses 15 oh it's be just one course thank you yes awesome okay okay all right um another award is that's going on as we speak tonight um steve porcello mm -hmm. who is our school resource officer is getting the officer of the year award tonight and it was a big surprise and i was assured that if i did it after eight probably <laughs> that wouldn't ruin yeah. the surprise so that's congratulations to steve um, the, the other recognitions, I, I, just, I just have to <coughs> tell everybody what a great job uh, Carlos Dominguez and the maintenance staff of this district and town have done. Uh, last week, as you all know, the two mm -hmm. pipes burst mm -hmm. in Audison, um, and we had eight inches of water in the cafeteria, water coming down multi-levels. It was a mess, and uh, the Jack Flood was there. He was he did a great job and as administrator. Well, yeah, it's a good name <laughs> for that. <laughs> True, I hadn't thought of that. Uh, mm -hmm. But anyway, our maintenance staff were terrific, mm -hmm. and when people came in on Monday, they they looked and they couldn't see, you know, that there had been that kind of water. Now, there must be something out there in the universe because today, um, a pipe burst backed up I'm not quite sure what what it was in the girls locker room but four inches of water on the girls bathroom and then backed into the locker room and so that had to be all shut off so they're they're working <coughs> now as we speak so I'm trying to get that Addison, all Addison. at Audison as well at Audison oh. as well mm-hmm yes well, Dr. Al Dr. Allison Ampey um can you just clarify for us at this point with the new facilities department does did kind of taking care of the buildings over the vacation, did that come under facilities? Does that come under us? And were people, uh, us, okay, and were peop people, were, okay, but people were still, people were checking on the buildings through the freeze and stuff? Yes, they were. In fact, um, well, it's true that the custodians are st and maintenance are still in our budget, but their supervision and organization of their schedule is all in the <coughs> department. Okay. Yes. Um, Mark Miano in particular was in all of the buildings, not just schools, over the weekend checking. Mm -hmm. He also has a setup on a computer where he can do, do sensors. And there was a number of problems he found that he was able to come in, in fact, really early, early, early mornings. Um, one in the morning to fix before there became a bigger problem. Mm -hmm. For some reason, and we don't know what that, what the reason was, the sensors at Audison did not pick up the flowing water. He is looking in to find out what, what happened in that case. But yes, they had been over the weekend checking the buildings because everybody knew it was going to be deep freeze. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. I'm, I'm glad that we're doing that because I know you know, we've had a couple breaks now in the past, Bishop or Pearson and um, the high school, and we needed to start doing more checks, and I'm glad we're, to hear that we're doing it. Well, we have more checks, but it was also set up on a computer. Yeah, no, that's yeah. great. Yeah. Too, if it works. <laughs> well, yeah, it sort of worked. Mm -hmm. it didn't work as well as we would have liked it, but they did a terrific job, and um, so my, I want to say, say thank you to all of them publicly. I know you were finished talking about this whole issue, but I do want to. Oh, Kath, we were doing all right, so all right, well. Just, just <laughs> one thought that you need to think about. <laughs> and that is, over the years since we have gone from that model, um, we require all the teachers to have certification in their field. Mm -hmm. When you go to an elementary model, our teachers in the, elementary, in the middle school do not have an elementary certification. Mm -hmm. That would be another area that we would have to really look at. I'm just, mm -hmm. yes. 
need to put mm -hmm. that out there because that's not actually insignificant. Mm -hmm. Okay. Dr. Allison Ampey. Okay. <laughs> Beating the dead horse. Um, I, did, I ran numbers on the idea, not having seen the proposal that we were given, mm -hmm. but just looking at how many students we have, how many students we have in sixth grade, how many classrooms there are. And I'm coming out with using all the classrooms, um, 21 students per class, mm -hmm. which, yes, we could fit everybody in, a door in but that suggests mm -hmm. there's not much extra space and that's not allowing for significant growth anywhere mm -hmm. so that would work today mm -hmm. and it worked tomorrow right but in a year or two years we're going to mm -hmm. even if we did this massive redistricting to spread everybody out around it's not clear to me it would continue working we would still have issues with space constraints so good mm -hmm. and hardy will is an issue we have to do yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> Okay. That's it. Consent agenda. All items listed with an asterisk are considered to be routine and will be enacted by one motion. There will be no separate discussion of these items. Unless a member of the committee so requests, in which event the item will be considered in its normal sequence. Mr. Hainer. I'd like the field trip pulled. The field trip is removed. Um, approval of warrant 16117, dated February 11th. A total warrant amount 454000 $833.40. Approval of minutes, regular meeting, February 11th, 2016. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Unanimous consent agenda. Now we have before us approval of the trip, uh, AHS, MASC, Student Council, Hyannis, March 9th through 11th. Mr. Hainer. I think the trip is fantastic. I have just one question as far as attendance. How will those students be uh, marked uh, regarding attendance? It Our works like field trips. Um, you will have an excused absence. And, uh, and, and, and students over the years have had to make decisions about which field trips they go on because there's a six that they would have in the high school before they would have to sort of okay. justify their case before the dean. I just want to make sure mm -hmm. that the students themselves know this no, before, they know. so they don't get in trouble. Thank you. No. Okay. Uh, motion to approve the trip by Mr. Hainer, second by Dr. Seuss. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? That's unanimous. Uh, subcommittee liaison reports and announcements. Before we go on to the subcommittees, I just want to make an announcement that uh, there are now 16 Minuteman towns who have approved the new regional agreement. Excellent. Um, wow. Six of these towns voted to leave wow. the district. Um, Boxborough, Carlisle, mm -hmm. Lincoln, Sudbury, mm -hmm. Weston, Wayland. Dover elected to stay. Hmm. So that's where we stand. We go from a, if everything pans out the way it looks, we're going from a 16 town district to a 10 town district. Mr. Hainer. Two questions. Uh, I assume they're smaller in population as far as... Uh, yes. Yeah. And the second question, does the uh, agreement that's going forward change with our proportion of the vote now that the... or is it still a percentage? The well, same it's, a per it's a percentage, but we're, it will be a percentage of a smaller number of towns. So obviously, we the weighting would be increased by the amount that's being okay. pulled out by the departure of those Fine. Thank you. six towns. Hmm. It's just simple change of the denominator, change of the numerator, a little math. Hmm. Um, policies and procedures, Mr. <clears throat> Pierce. Thank you, Mr. Chair. We're going to be meeting on Thursday of next week at 8.15. Uh, we're going to be meeting with uh, our school policy council. Mm -hmm. uh, She's going to go over some older policies that need to be consolidated, but uh, just ones that I've identified that we haven't really looked at in a number of years. So uh, plan to have some uh, further report on that on March 10th for all of us. Budget, Dr. Allison Ampey. Um, budget's going to go discuss the budget tomorrow at Audison uh, as part of our outreach. Otherwise, we have nothing to report. Facilities, Ms. Starks. Nothing to report. Really? You haven't been doing anything? <laughs> <laughs> Nothing at all. <laughs> uh, by the way, 
to the people on the task force, thank you so very much. You, you, you've done really great work and so, so bad. Accountability, curriculum instruction, and assessment, Mr. Thielman. No report other than your committee is going to take up the question of the timeline, whether the policy needs to be amended for the superintendent evaluation. Uh, yes, that's right. We, uh, we have you, to update it for the new timeline. Yeah, so we have no report. The policy and procedures committee is going to look at the timeline of the superintendent's evaluation. Community relations, Dr. Seuss. Uh, we are meeting Tuesday the 1st, and we're going to talk a little bit more about the survey to parents mm -hmm. and teachers on the calendar, um, outreach to the community about options for Gibbs, if we're going that way, and some other sort of public forums <coughs> that we might want to have before the end of the year. And that's at 4.30, right? And we are at 4.30, yes. It was posted at 5.30. <coughs> oh, it was, so. <laughs> it was posted at 5.30. Community relations. I know, it was posted before I posted it. I mean... Oh, okay. But when I At got the email now. from you, it said 5.30. Well, you know, when it went me. out. It comes from the town. Oh, got it. Oh, okay. okay. So it went out It's an automatic type of it. posting. But it's changed. Oh, got it. Okay. okay. It is changed. Okay. 4.30. So it is 4.30. Got it. 4.30. Right. Yes. Executive session minute what review subcommittee. I have finished reviewing all of them. I have, uh, thanks to Ms. Fitzgerald, put the entire package to council. Uh, he had been on vacation. We're going to set up a meeting. It's my intent to bring them before the committee for approval. I would like to just share with the committee that policy BEC revised in 2012 requires us to at least three times a year review our executive session minutes for release. Mm. So oh, I will be bringing a strong motion <laughs> to have us review it. Or change executive policy. session minutes from previous meetings on a regular basis. Mm -hmm. He gives suggestion uh, timelines of when they had to be released. So I, that part of not being released, I blame the policy chair for not informing us. For I have an announcement. <laughs> oh, yeah, 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 it's not. It's all of us. Uh, the policy chair has been finding interesting policies, too. Um, uh, warrant committee. All get paid. Uh, school enrollment task force. I think we've I think talked, we talked about, about it. it. We'll talk some more We're if you done. want. Um, an hold on. We've about. got, we've yeah, got an so. announcement by Dr. Seuss. Um, I just wanted to tell people about this uh, great event on March 5th um, at Town Hall. Um, Arlington Eats, which is an organization that provides food for kids when they're not in school, during vacations and weekends and so forth, also snacks for kids when they are in school, um, is doing a fundraiser, um, 7.30 till 11. There's a cash bar, there's gonna be food, um, there's going to be um, auctions. And my husband's band is playing, so <laughs> an extra reason to come. What's the date again, please? It's uh, Saturday, March 5th at 7.30 in Town Hall. Excellent. Yes. Anything else? Uh, we do have a brief discussion in executive session. So uh, the motion would be to conduct, uh, move to executive session to conduct strategy sessions in preparation for negotiations with union and or non-union personnel or contract negotiations with union and or non-union in which if held in an open meeting may have detrimental effect uh, and to conduct strategy with respect to collective bargaining or litigation in which if held in an open meeting may have a detrimental effect. Collective bargaining may also be conducted. Motion by Mr. Pierce, second by Mr. Thielman. Roll call, Mr. Hayner. Aye. Mr. Pierce. Aye. Dr. Allison Ampey. Aye. Ms. Starks. Mr. Thielman. Aye. Uh, Dr. Seuss. Yes. And the chair votes in the affirmative. That's unanimous. And this should be very brief. Are we well, going we, out? Uh, we, we will, we're done after executive session. So we're not coming out to. So we're not going to come back. We're not going to come back. No, right. we're not gonna